Welcome to a fine gaming experience. We're doing Monster Hunter World here today. I got a guest speaker with me. I'll let him introduce himself. Ah, uh, hey there. Um, my name is Ice. I've been playing games like Monster Hunter for a long time, and uh, hopefully my tiny bit of insight will help everything out. And yeah, he's the one who introduced me to this series, so I think he'll have uh, some good insight to show as we go on through. Sisters and brothers of the Fifth Fleet, it's time. I'll keep my farewell brief. Never was much with words. Once you board this ship, there's no turning back. The next ground your feet will touch will be that of the new world. If any of you have lost your nerve, then step away now and let no one judge you. Very well. Then sail safe and strong, and may the Sapphire Star light your way. World. It's a hunter party. My favorite thing about this is the ambiance in the room. My favorite thing is the girl just trying to read her book who gets horribly annoyed at everyone sitting beside her. Cats carrying oversized food. Capcom, of course, uh, showing their extreme lack of subtlety. That is their specialty. And yes, here's the poor girl who's just trying to read. Did you hear? We're almost there. You ready to grab this new world by the horns? Don't know about you, but it feels like ages since I left home to join the commission. So, nervous? Believe you me, I get it. Anything could happen to us, but hey, that's yep. happening. Uh. Hey, aren't you one of the A-list hunters? Go ahead, what? just spill beer all over my drinks. So or we. beer all over my <laughs> books. <laughs> hey, tell us your name. And yes, here's where I normally would have created the character, but... Unfortunately, the armor is covering up most of the look, but I'll show it off at the end. <laughs> to the A list and the commission. Cheers! <laughs> a big part of Monster Hunter is definitely the armor and outfits. So, oh, me. so much so. What's your theory? The Elder Dragons must migrate to the New World. It's Barbie reason. dress up with weapons. Yes. After running the research commission for 40 odd years, the guild's itching for an answer. They say the Fifth Fleet's got the best shot at cracking this case, and I agree. Keep it down. Hey, speaking of, A-listers usually operate in teams of two. Have you sat down with your partner yet? I don't wanna. Of course, they still want to carry the JRPG torch, and there is a silent protagonist. Listen well, that. we grunt and oof and scream <laughs> a lot. There. The waves are picking up. That's Dialogueless. <laughs> You're on the A list, right? Huh. Meow de doo. <laughs> I'm not psychic, but I do have pretty good ears. Ah, put her there. I happen to be an A-lister myself. Oh, whoa! Can you imagine the sheer amount of meat eaten off the floor in this world? Well, it's an art. You know, just bury the meat, let it ferment under the ground. You can have some nice, uh, high-quality Swedish food. Or that's actually fish, but... That's fine. The recipes, by far, probably have something about fermented food left on the ground. That's how you get the poison steaks you give to monsters. Yes. Oh, 
And there goes our cat. He's dead. <laughs> Spoiler. Spent all that time creating him just so he can get killed off before you actually play the game. And I hope everyone enjoyed uh, joining us today. But Oh, wait, no, there's more. I was certain we were dead. They even did a fade out. Yep. Now, one unfortunate thing with this new suit of armor they gave me for starting up is I will be doing gratuitous panty shots every time I climb up something here, so... And this one first part of the game is, of course, your standard tutorial, where they show you how to do all the basics of the game. When climbing, you do have two options. You can speed climb. Or you can use a grappling hook to pull yourself up faster, uh, depending on how much stamina you want to spend. Which I believe I get to show off here in the next little bit. If we don't get crushed by the ship. Considering this ship was, you know, vertical, thrown onto the back of this giant lava monster, and just flying all over the place, it's in pretty good shape. It is, absolutely. They built them well. We need to get out of here. I've got an idea. Well, considering the type of work they do. That's one thing you never actually do in this game, is fight something on a ship. No krakens in the ocean. Not in this Monster Hunter, but other Monster Hunter games, there have been uh, ship-based fights. This is the only Monster Hunter I have played, so... I encourage anyone who has played the earlier games in the series to let me know about the creatures and how they've changed since... Unfortunately, the camera here didn't let me move right. As someone who's played a fair number of Monster Hunters, I'll probably detail a lot of the differences between the older and newer versions. One thing I like about this game, too, is they're coming out with new additions all the time. We just had Iceborne come out, and even before that, we had streams of new monsters getting added every couple of months. For free at that, which is great. Mm -hmm. The fact that Iceborne pretty much cost as much as the full game, you get a lot out of it, though. I do find it odd that was her plan, but she wasn't ready for it. The handler is a special kind of special. Every day is special when you're special. And yes, that big thing we were on the back of is a giant scary lava dragon. One thing I do have to say about this game, it is very pretty. And this was Monster Hunter's first foray into modern gen systems. Um, actually, a lot of people, when they first saw the trailer uh, back at E3, I'm going to probably be wrong on this, I think it was 2017. Maybe 2017 or 2018. Uh-oh. This is the thing with Wyvern, say I like doing this to you. Yep. Well, they aren't paid very much for their work. Yeah. We don't even give them treats. We just kind of hook shot their leg and hope for the best. It's surprising they take us where we need to go every time. What's this? Somebody must have set up this camp. There is a tremendous amount of movement in the world, which is really helps bring it to life. The grass, the trees, everything. It has a map in it. Well, and there's a lot of interactive stuff, like even in this demo we'll see the monsters smashing through things, changing the environment themselves. Looks like we're right around Some of the monsters, even as they're in different environments, will change their attacks up the to match that. Base of operations is here. This is where our ship was supposed to dock. For now, I think it would be best if we make our way to base. The map should help us find our way. So the first major change that I'm going to talk about uh, from mo earlier Monster Hunters to this one is the changes in the map. Uh, earlier Monster Hunter games, your maps, even just your event maps, were segmented multiple ways. So you'd be trapped between loading screens. 
Monster Hunter world maps are massively large compared to old Monster Hunter maps, and there are no loading screens between them. The only loading screens you'll see is if you teleport through uh, certain abilities you have from camp to camp. And really, that's just loading up the new area because you're doing it so suddenly. Mm hmm. And yeah, there's a lot of environmental stuff to this. Like, there's birds eating corpses, there'll be natural creatures just grazing around, and then bigger things feeding off them. I found this interesting because this is where you would normally go to the next area, and they've just subtly blocked it off with a landslide. Mm hmm. They want to keep it as simple as possible when you're just starting it off. I'm never a big fan of the linear paths, but for the introduction, I understand it. It helps show you, too, the game it encourages you to explore and see more. There's lots of other things you'll find if you go neat places. Now, people were very upset about the concept of scout flies that the handler just mentioned there. I'll go into more detail after this cutscene. First, she has to walk into the swarm of a pack of angry lizards. You have to remember, she survived this long. But how many times, like, throughout this game will we save her life? You know what? We may need to put a counter up to actually put that down. <laughs> don't pick a fight if you don't have a weapon. We Should we include the on, leap off uh, the Hurry. creature at the introduction there where we s caught her hand and saved her? Stay low in the Maybe. To remain hidden. Probably. This is something you don't use too much, hiding from monsters, but it's pretty handy when you get used to it. It's much more handy earlier on in the game when you're a lot less... Quietly. Uh, we'll say, equipped to fight tougher monsters. Yes. This is what I hate with some parts, too, is you have to wait for the story to advance before you can actually go where you want to. I will say, though, this is mostly just in the starting area right here. Otherwise, they let you go anywhere and do anything stupid you want to do. You can very often find yourself dead because you explored too far. Very true. At least they don't have fall damage. No. Which is very good for this area, considering how high up we'll be getting in some parts. And now if you just saw these these little green dots you're seeing on the screen there, those are scout flies. And scout flies are brand new to Monster Hunter World, and they've in a lot of ways made a lot of the exploration in Monster Hunter much easier. Newer players will love them. Older players overall didn't like them because it made it a bit too easy to do research. They'll basically stick to everything you can interact with in the environment. And, there, and because of the maps being as large as they are, I think the scout flies were necessary. Uh, I do wish they had a way to completely turn them off, but they're tied into the story, so they can't be turned off. Not exactly an integral part, so it would be nice if you could turn it off. But yeah, certain cutscenes and whatnot definitely have them as a uh, moment like this. Yeah, we'll have to add another count to the, uh, save the handler. Don't mind me. And yeah, monsters will smash through things, open up new paths. Sometimes they'll knock down things they shouldn't and get caught. The designers who design monsters for this game do a lot of research into the way real-world creatures move in order to figure out how a monster at this size would actually move around. There's a lot of zoology that actually goes into the creation of a monster. Speaking of a monster... Yeah. Our big T-Rex buddy here is going to be quite a pain early on. And this also shows a very important mechanic of the game. Monsters don't necessarily work together. Yep. Sometimes you really want them to fight each other. Why do you have to spend as much time killing one yourself when you can just have a bigger monster come up and take a chunk out of it? You all right? Let's go. Okay.
Normally I'll be cutting out the cutscenes, but I wanted to leave this one in. It shows the beautiful stained glass work they put in for this. Not something you see too often, but very nice. Mm-hmm. Amazing, ain't it? Just look at this gate. It's like nature meant for us to build a stara right here. A stara. I like it. <laughs> By far my favorite hunter's That's hub in all the Monster here. Hunter games. You're the last to it definitely seems very interactive. Like, as we'll be seeing, each part has its own purpose, and people will be walking around. You can talk to literally any NPC here. Plus, one of the great things about it, as obnoxiously complicated as it looks, it is extremely easy to navigate. Yeah, the learning curve in this game is very good. There might be some big challenges you'll face, but if you just try some of the earlier things a few more times, you'll get the hang of it. Hopefully. Hopefully. Some monsters definitely have their own tricks you'll have to learn and adapt to, if not completely change your build for. The difficulty really ramps up after a certain point, but Monster Hunter is definitely on the list of difficult games. Yeah, the end game in this is amazingly difficult. And even the first bit here, when we're really under-equipped, uh, even some of the basic enemies will give us more than a few headaches. This place is the beating heart of the commission. Wait here a second. Commander, I found him. Welcome to Astera. There are partial cutscenes like this, which are just dialogue scenes. They'll usually give you a little bit of dialogue, and then the rest of it is all read-through. They do animate a surprising number of the cutscenes, though, and have voiceovers for a lot more than I would have expected. They do, that's true. Even for the dialogue options for our main character, despite the fact they're just grunting and whatnot, I had 18 choices on which voice to choose for her. I ended up going with one of the more anime-esque ones, but it's a carefree and wild character, so well, I thought it fit fairly well. Okay, I'll give you the grand tour. We'll get a good look of her natural f appearance uh, outside the armor at the very end of this episode. They carry most of the basic necessities. You should drop by later to see what they have. Uh, when we start off here, there's literally only one shop to worry about. Uh, by the end of the game, you're looking at somewhere around six, seven, maybe even eight things to interact with down here. There's the uh, general and other meeting people down here. It's uh, definitely a hub on its own, even this early. They're also nice enough to give you multiple ways to get to your home place in here. Uh, one of them we just passed by, but there's several throughout the game. Yeah, we'll check that out right at the end. The first level is a lot of your items and whatnot, getting new stuff, buying them, trading in stuff and whatnot. You should always tour the downstairs. Get used to hitting the downstairs before any hunt, because there's a lot of things to check out down there. Yeah, you'll get a lot of quests down there. But this is kind of the heart of the game right here. Mm -hmm. Look at this, place. Wanna check it out? this is where we'll make all our new weapons, armor, upgrade them, all that fun stuff. I was hoping to change out of the armor, but they won't let me quite yet. Let's check it out. Wanna get going? As you can see what I was saying before, the area is actually very easy to navigate, despite the fact that it looks so daunting from the outside. And it's interesting, too, because it's a very vertical area. A lot of towns are just spread over a wide area, but this one makes use of a small space and 
heightens it so it's just curled up around it. This here's our canteen. Another very vital spot. You wouldn't think it, but getting meals in before every adventure is a very important part we'll be running into. And we get our cat back. Somehow survived falling off a ship. I think I did a pretty good job of matching the cat to the picture there. Right. We're calling for a council. Come on. Yeah. Now that you are all here, let us begin council. After tracking a migrating elder dragon across the sea, the fifth fleet have finally arrived in Astera. Give them a warm welcome. They're a fine group. Worthy comrades who will help see the Research Commission's long efforts finally rewarded. Would you like to say a few words? Thank you, sir. We're ready to roll up our sleeves and get our hands dirty. This here is the Commission's core team. You should all get to know each other. Looking forward to it. Now, down to business. The latest monster to make the Elder Crossing is known as Zora Magdaros. A huge monster with a mountain of fire upon its back. The Research Commission's job is to discover exactly why the Elder Dragons are migrating to the New World. Elder Dragons have been with us since the dawn of time. And Zora will be our focus of the game for probably about the first third. Once every decade or so they flock to this continent. But for what reason? I also like how this shows all the different races that exist in the world, too. Like giant cats. And weird dwarf men. For the time being, I need you to focus on investigating our Jagras problem. And securing Astera. Start by investigating the Jagras' habitat. Find out what makes him tick, and we'll go from there. Right. We're on it, sir. Everyone else, you know the drill. Make sure these hunters have everything they need. Now we're talking. A pretty simple Make starting a quest. Just go check out those right lizards right. that were harassing us in the intro. Teachers, so don't be afraid to ask. You heard him. Stick with me and you'll have no problems. The fifth banner promises a change in the wind. It's your job to fulfill that promise. All right, dismissed. One very interesting thing is because ship travel takes so long to get to the new world where they are, a lot of these people have been here a very long time. And since we're just some starting grunt, we get to share our room with a whole bunch of other people. Certainly not some stockyard they just quickly threw a bed into. Mm-hmm. Only the best for the newbies. But we do get access to a lot from here. From here, we can change our weapons, our armor, our items, go to the training area, change up our Palico helper. And changing your weapon in Monster Hunter World is like changing your class. It is everything that you do from start to finish. That, along with the weapon skills and armor skills combining, become a very interesting set. And here's what our heroine looks like from default. Want to get going? I'll probably be goofing around with the sword and shield to start, but as I mentioned, I'll probably be using almost all the weapons. You can get more familiar with your weapons at the training area. Just talk to the housekeeper to get started. What would you say your favorite weapon is? I really enjoyed the hammer, but I have to say, after goofing around with the heavy bow gun, it is so fun. But we'll get to explore all that a little bit more next time here. I hope you enjoyed the intro of the game, and I hope you catch us next time. Take care, all.